Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be doing a review of Belgian beers. And this is a really, really fun one for me. Um, Belgium is uh, rightfully so rather known as kind of the beer mecca. It is to beer what uh, France is to wine. And that's not an understatement. Um, today, uh, we're going through some of the biggest Belgian beers out there. Uh, there are many, 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 but this is a sampling of some really good ones that you can find uh, pretty readily in uh, most areas of the country. Um, so for the first one, we're going to be starting with the Chimay. This is their Chimay Blue, hence the blue label. Uh, it's the uh, Grand Reserve. This is a Belgian Dark Strong Ale, clocks in at 9%. Uh, Chimay is one of the tiny handful of uh, Trappist breweries, which are the uh, beers that are brewed by monks at a monastery, uh, legitimately brewed by monks. Um, the second one is from the Hoiga Brewery, and it's uh, the Delirium Tremens. This is their flagship beer. It is a Belgian golden strong ale. This clocks in at 8.5%. Uh, the third beer is the St. Bernardus Prior 8. Uh, just like with Chimay, St. Bernardus is one of the tiny handful of Trappist brewers in the world. Um, this is their uh, Belgian Double Abbey Ale, uh, Prior 8, clocks in at 8%. And then the final beer we will be reviewing is from the Von Steenberg uh, Brewery. This is Golden Drock. Uh, this is another Belgian Dark Strong Ale, so uh, same style as the Chimay Blue, the Grand Reserve. Uh, this clocks in at 10.5, so... This is going to be a really exciting episode. I, I honestly can't wait. Uh, Belgian beers are among my absolute favorite in the world. Um, just just world-class brewers out there and uh, rightfully, rightfully, in my opinion, known as the beer capital of the world. Um, these are going to be big. Uh, these are ones that you enjoy over a long period of time because they are big in-your-face beers. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with the Chimay Blue Grand Reserve. Okay, so the first beer in today's sampling uh, is the Chimay Blue. As it's commonly known, it's actually the Grand Reserve. This is the Belgian Dark Strong Ale uh, with which we're starting. Clocks in at 9%. Uh, as I stated prior, this is one of the two uh, Abbey Ales or Trappist Ales that are in the lineup. Uh, there's, uh, it, it's fewer than 15. It might be 10, 11, 12. I forget the exact number, but that is how many uh, Monk Trappist, Belgian Abbey Ale brewers there are in, in the world. So these are uh, particularly special, in my opinion, uh, just because it's so neat that there's still monks brewing beer. And it's like part of how they get their revenue to run their priory. So this is really neat. Um, Chimay Blue, big giant beer. Let's get this poured into the glass and we're using appropriate glassware, a nice uh, kind of tuliped goblet. Uh, this is ideal for all four of these. Uh, this is actually an old uh, delirium glass that I've had for many years, in fact. So let's get this poured. I will do my best to pour this well. It's already getting a, a decent head, so I don't want to go sloshing too heavily. I'll wait till the final quarter. In fact, I won't even. I need to be a bit more gentle here. Yes, it's very, very effervescent. All right, I won't finish pouring that in quite yet, but you can see just how dark this Belgian Strong Hill is. It's very, very, very dark. It's got a really nice head on it, um, very tight bubbles. Uh, it's kind of got a brownish, tannish tint to the foam uh, from the dark beer, as you might expect. Let's give it a smell. Yeah, it definitely smells like a strong beer. Um, I don't want to say it necessarily smells boozy, but you can get a hint uh, of the fact that this is indeed a higher ABV beer just by smelling it and letting the nose speak to you. Um, you also pick up, as you might expect, hints of fruits, grapes, raisins. Those are the big ones I'm getting. Maybe some fig in the background, but uh, it's all very big, bold aromas that come through yeah it smells really nice um so that head is settled pretty well I'm, I'm gonna see if i can just sneak just the last bit of this beer in here very very gently so we don't 
upset or build that head any higher than it is because it looks pretty much perfect right there. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see what this is about. Oh, oh man, yeah. Oh, that's all in a good way, by the way. This is just a huge beer. Oh, wow. It's so big, it's so complex. Everything that you get on the nose, you get as soon as you take a sip, but it's just got so much more depth to it. The nose kind of kind of teases you, gets you excited about it, and then once you get it in your mouth and uh, just let it work its way around your palate, oh man, this is good beer. This is properly, properly good beer. You get all the big fruit up front, and then it comes into the middle with this nice boozy character. That's the best way I can think to describe it is boozy, but it doesn't taste boozy. It's got that same quality and it does give like a nice warmth in the throat and as it works its way down to your stomach. But uh, yeah, this is just a big bold beer. Oh man, that's so good. Now, I don't know which yeast strains they use, if they have some live yeast in there, if maybe there's some um, specific yeast that they use, but I can tell you in the mix of the fruits that you get on the nose and you definitely get that in the flavor, you also get just a mild hint of clove, almost like uh, one would get from a Hefeweizen yeast. Um, there is that slight in the back and you also get a little bitter chocolate in the finish and it's just super clean. Um, the body on this and the mouthfeel on this is surprisingly not as big as you might expect from such a big beer. It's more or less medium. It's more or less medium for both the categories. Um, the body feels about medium in my mouth and the mouth feel is about a medium viscosity. Um, it does a good job of still sticking around on the palate just because it's such a big beer, but it's not as thick and viscous as um, many other beers with uh, significantly lower ABVs. But this is a seriously delicious complex beer. Um, I've had uh, a few sips in this now, a big one, so I'm going to finish enjoying this. We will come back and get the full rating at the end. Uh, but next up is the Hoiga Brewery uh, Delirium Tremens. Most people know this beer. This is regarded kind of the world around as one of the best beers in the world. And we'll get to it and I'll explain to you why. Okay, so for our next beer, uh, this one really just gets me going. On, honestly, I, uh, it just does. This is the Hoiga Brewery Delirium Tremens. This is a Belgian strong ale, a golden Belgian strong ale, clocks in at 8.5. This is easily and undeniably in my absolute top five favorite beers on the face of the planet Earth that I've had, and I have had thousands of different beers. This is top five. It is that freaking good. Um, this is consistently rated by beer aficionados and official beer raters as one of the best beers in the world. And there is a seriously good reason for it. To say that it's special is an absolute understatement. Um, the, I mean, there's only so much you can say about it. If you have never had this beer, before I even review it and tell you about it, I'm gonna go out and just say, you have got to get your hands on this beer and try it for yourself. This beer is absolute magic. I don't know what in the world they do to make this. I don't know what wizardry they do to make such a phenomenal world-class beer, but this is one of the absolute best you will ever have, I promise you that. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna do my best to get it poured into the glass here properly. I imagine uh, from my own experience with this beer, I gotta be gentle because it will get a pretty big head even when you're being gentle. And you do want a little head, but you don't want a giant. Yeah, see, I've already, I've already almost gone a little overboard. I don't know if the camera's picking that up well or not, but God, this is just a beautiful thing to behold. It is exactly as advertised. A gold Belgian strong ale. 
going to do my best to gently get the rest in here because I want it all in the glass when we go through this review. Oh, it's almost there. Okay, beautiful. All right, the head, as you would expect, uh, you could see as I was pouring, it was uh, forming quite nicely and I was being ridiculously gentle as I poured this into the glass. Um, the head forms with nice tight bubbles and it keeps the head there for a good bit. Even once you start sipping it, it will retain a reasonable thickness and stick to the side of the glass, kind of what you want. But let's jump right in with our nose first, see what we think. On the nose, you can smell a beer, all right? <laughs> I know, that's enlightening. You smell the beer, you can smell the booze, you can smell the malt. Um, the hops don't really come through at all. I'm not exactly sure what the bill is in this, uh, other than to say that it's liquid magic. It smells relatively mild. You kind of get some uh, kind of hay-like, earthy, toasty kind of bits in the malt bill that comes through on the sniff and just a bit of booze in the back, um, but it smells very clean. And it smells light. And it smells a little bit floral, a little bit fruity. But now for the fun part. Man, I, I legitimately can't even express to you how excited I am to be having this beer. It has been such a long time and have mercy. It's, uh, it's well worth it. It's like uh, reuniting with a, with a long lost friend. Oh my God. Oh my God. It just takes me back. It just takes me back to a really, really happy place. Um, how to describe this beer? You get a classic Belgian strong ale flavor up front. I mean, it's, it's quintessential Belgian strong ale, and this is a golden version, so it looks really nice in the glass. It's very effervescent. You can see I sipped down on it. I got some oils in there, and the head's still going. Um, I can see a nice, almost champagne-like little stream of bubbles still spewing up on the sides here. What did this actually taste like, though? It's actually got a really nice body to it. And the mouthfeel is stupidly silky. Stupidly silky smooth. But the body's got some substance. It's a medium to a medium heavy body, which, uh, you know, from a golden ale, maybe is surprising, but... You know, 8.5, it's got some fermentables in it, so it, it's got a, list, a little viscosity to it. The flavor. Classic Belgian strong ale, just a whisper of cloves, but the way that it finishes in your mouth is unlike any other beer. It almost tastes like cotton candy is the best way that I can describe it. And I know that sounds crazy, but I promise you, that's what it tastes like. The very finish on this beer, it's not that it's sweet, because there's no sweetness to it. Um, there's a slight fruitiness to it, but it's not sweet. But the finish on this is unlike any other. It's an amalgam of different fruits, maybe blueberries, maybe strawberries, and then just this finish that just tastes to me like cotton candy. Um, that's the best way I can think to describe it. I, I have never had a beer like this to date. Um, it, it's a one in a million. Uh, it's just so good. It's so good. If you're a fan of Belgian beers and or a fan of Belgian strong ales or whatever, or you're not even that interested, or you're even just getting into this and you happen upon this video, I highly, I cannot emphasize this enough. I highly recommend you seeking this beer out. The brewer is Hoiga. That's uh, Flemish, uh, which is a uh, dialect, language, and region in Belgium from Flanders. They speak Flemish there. Hoiga is the name of the brewery. Delirium Tremens is the name of the beer. Now, Delirium Tremens, a bit of trivia for you, is actually uh, the condition that, uh, I hate to say this, it's kind of bad, and it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek name of a beer, but it's the condition that uh, heavy, heavy, heavy alcoholics uh, suffer from when they're in the midst of alcohol withdrawal. It's delirium tremens. And the reason that the logo on this is a pink elephant is because that is one of the most often cited 
images that people going through delirium tremens uh, express that they see while going through alcohol withdrawal in the, in, in the throes of delirium tremens. And it's very bizarre. That's a bizarre thing, but it's reported over and over and over again. And uh, that's kind of their tongue in cheek little, there you go. So a bit of trivia for you. Um, we'll come back and give this the full rating, but I, I suspect you already know this is, this is gonna be one of these home run beers. It is phenomenal, still in my top five all time. It is just a special, special beer. Um, Total Wine, you can get this. Any good local craft beer supply store should have it. It is sold in most major markets in the country. Um, any local German restaurant may have it if they have a decent bottle selection. Even though this is Belgian, this is a Belgian series. Um, this is common at most German restaurants, or, uh, along with other German beers. But highly, highly recommend. Great, fantastic. I cannot say enough nice things about this beer. I absolutely love it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one while I enjoy this. Uh, next one up is the St. Bernardus Prior 8, which is a Belgian Trappist Abbey Ale. It is a double. Um, again, one of the tiny handful of uh, Trappist Monk brewed uh, beers that exist in the world. Um, there's only a handful of breweries, 10, 11, 12, something like that. A very small amount, but really neat beers. Very complex. We'll get on to that one next. Okay, so for our next beer, uh, number three, we're moving on to the St. Bernardus Prior 8. Um, this is a Belgian double, uh, an Abbey Ale, it's a Trappist Ale. Again, this is one of the tiny handful of uh, breweries in the world that is brewed by monks. Um, there's somewhere between 10 and 15, and it's a really small number, uh, but this is one of them. This one clocks in at 8% ABV. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this poured in the glass. Again, I will do my best to pour this well. I expect this might be quite a bit effervescent, so I'm going to be as gentle as I can so I don't overform the head. Yeah, I'm having to be really careful with this one. You can tell, you can see as I'm pouring this so gently just how effervescent this is. It just wants to form a big, big head on there. So I'm just going to give that a minute to settle. Uh, just like the uh, last one where the head was kind of going like this, it's kind of got a tannish uh, hue to it. Um, still nice tight foamy bubbles on there. That'll give us an opportunity to see what the nose has on store. It smells really nice. Um, no doubt about it. It smells really nice. It smells like a big beer and it uh, smells fruity um, but not uh, overly sweet. It smells like rich fruit or maybe if you mix them all and put them in a pie or in a pudding or something like that. Uh, that's really kind of the aroma, like a baked baked fruit in, in some kind of pastry. That's the overarching smell that I'm getting out of this. Um, I expect that this is gonna be yet another good one. I have had uh, several, several beers uh, by St. Bernardus over the years, but I am pretty sure I've never had the prior eight, so I'm really personally looking forward to this one that I got. Got that all in there. Head looks good, nice and settled. Let's give this a sip. Oh, that's a nice beer. You know, at first I wasn't entirely sure. I was thinking, oh, it's quite a bit weaker than, say, the Strong Ales, the, the, the number one, the Chimay Blue, the Grand Reserve. Belgian Dark Strong Ale or the uh, Hoiga Delirium Tremens, that's a gold at Strong Ale. Uh, this one just a little behind the ABV on those priors um, with eight, uh, no pun intended, prior eight, ha. Um, but uh, this, is, uh, this is really nice. Um, it's got this nice earthy quality to it, but you do get that richness and you, you definitely can taste the fruit uh, character and quality of the malts that are in there. Yeah, it does, uh, does taste remarkably like how it comes through on the nose. It's got a nice body to it. That's a nice thick body. Mouthfeel is, uh, is a bit sticky. It kind of rolls around and sticks all around the mouth, which is really nice and it really lets you experience it. This is interesting because the fruit comes in on the front 
then it dissipates and you get this nice earthiness in the middle and almost a little bit of funk. And it kind of finishes off the same way. It's got this nice earthiness to it. Then the fruit come back just a little bit to finish out and then just a little bit of funk on the back end. I don't know if they have maybe some wild yeast strains that they use in their brewing, but this is a really nice, interesting beer. Very big, very bold, very flavorful, and it's very rich. This is a filling beer. I can already tell you just from a couple little uh, sips of this. It's a nice filling beer. It doesn't have the warming sensation that some of the bigger um, uh, strong ales in this, uh, in this review we're doing have had, but it's still really nice. It's a very enjoyable beer. This would be one I would go for on, say, uh, a cold winter's night, and I still wanted a beer. This would be a nice, heavy beer. Uh, you could almost consider this to be a, a dessert beer, if you will. It, it would go well with something like that. Um, trying to think how I would pair this with food. Maybe with a richer dessert or uh, perhaps uh, if you wanted to go with something that paired well with similar qualities, a good steak would probably do well. And if you're going for polar opposites, maybe a light seafood or poultry dish and then have this on the side. I think uh, given the characteristics of the flavor, it would also pair, pair well with gamier meat like uh, um, uh, lamb, for instance, or, or venison or something like that. Uh, wild boar, anything that's more gamey. I, I think that this would interplay with those big, bold flavors. Uh, but it's really nice. Very enjoyable beer. Uh, I'll uh, come back at the end. We'll get the full review. But let's go ahead and move on to our final beer, uh, the von Steinberger Golden Drock. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I, I do speak German, so I'm just guessing it's perhaps von, Sch von Steinberger. Maybe. I, I don't know if it's Flemish. Maybe related to the Dutch. Um, I'll, I'll look it up to see if I can confirm, but really good beer. We'll get on to the final one and we'll get the final reviews on all four at the end. Okay, for the final beer in our uh, little miniature tour of Belgium here with big Belgian beers, uh, we move on to the von Steinberger uh, Guldendrock. This is a Belgian dark uh, strong ale. 10.5% ABV, um, the highest ABV up here by uh, a good healthy bit. Um, got a really neat looking bottle. It's just got a little plastic film, the contoured label that's almost like a shrink wrap style. But it almost gives the impression of porcelain, much like the uh, Hoiga Delirium Trimmins has kind of a similar wrapped uh, porcelain look. And maybe that's uh, how the Belgians like to do it. But it's got this uh, kind of Viking looking ship on it. Uh, really neat looking uh, color scheme. It's a cool looking bottle. Um, this is a really big beer. Let's get this poured in. I will do my best to pour it well. It's just gonna be a little more gingerly. Oh, it's just so effervescent as it starts to hit and it jostles just a little bit. It, it really just wants to form a, a gigantic head. So I'm going really, really slowly. That will at least get enough in this glass. Okay, we'll get that last little bit there in just a minute. Uh, again, just like the other three that we did prior, uh, this one has a really nice tight formed head, um, slight tannish color, really, really creamy looking foamy head on top. Let's give it a sniff. I can tell you this doesn't have the most pronounced nose uh, of all these beers. I would say it's probably like the least forward with the aroma. Um, you can just get kind of your classic Belgian strong ale aroma in there. It smells just a little boozy, a little fruity, and it smells rich. But it does smell good, and uh, certainly just getting a sniff of that does uh, make you want to kind of dive right in. Let's see if I can gently finish the last of that in there. Okay, the head's still just a little bit big, so we'll give that just a minute to settle itself. But you can see uh, another big dark beer. Um, this one actually, it's I doubt the camera's picking it up that well, but holding it up to a good light source. Um, while it is a darker brown, uh, as the light shines through in the uh, part of the glass where a little more light comes in, it actually has this really beautiful red hue to it, uh, which is really nice looking. Um, I'm just gonna do my best to let some of that head dissipate just a tick. 
natural oils from my fingers. You've seen me use the uh, face grease trick, which uh, I know can be off-putting to some, but again, uh, I just want to get into the beer and it's, it's my own person. I'm not sharing this with anybody, but uh, it's come down enough. Let's go ahead and give this a sip. We might get a bit of the head stuck in my mustache. Oh, that is so rich and decadent. Wow. Wow. Oh, it's a really nice beer. It's got this sweetness to it. It's got this fruitiness to it. Um, it is very similar to the same types of fruit and the same feeling that it gives you in the prior beers that we tried. Um, though, even though this is really, really dark, I would say of the rest of the three um, that we've sampled, this actually most closely resembles the Hoiga Delirium Tremens um, in, in flavor profile. It's got this nice complexity, but this almost light fruity sweetness that comes through. Yeah, it's got this beautiful boozy back to it. It's a really big complex beer. It's got a nice body. The mouth feels um, really, really smooth. It's uh, probably about a medium mouth feel. It's not particularly viscous and it doesn't feel watery. It's got some substance to it, but um, it doesn't linger around in the mouth and kind of stick to the inside or, or all over the palate. But honestly, the flavor profile of this is so big and bold. Um, it doesn't even need a super, super heavy mouth feel. It's got a heavy enough body and golly, yeah, th this is just nice beer. boozy. You get all the deep dark fruits in there. Plums, raisins, figs. It's all in there. It's really earthy. There's also a little hint of a kind of caramelly toffee like finish, but it's slightly sweet, almost like a caramelized um, brown sugar kind of tacked into it and maybe mixed with some raisins. And I don't know if you made like a like a peanut brittle but threw some dark dried fruit in there. That's kind of the impression I'm getting. It's very, very enjoyable. It's a very deep, rich beer and it is a bigger ABV. And I can tell you that this one absolutely has that little bit of a boozy sensation, but the nice part is you get that kind of classic, heavier, higher ABV beer warming sensation as it goes down in the back of your throat and down in your stomach. This is another one that would just be tremendous on a cold winter's day. Um, warm you up and just a nice big bold beer meant to be enjoyed over a, a longer period of time this is a nice one um, all of these beers were great this was a wonderful wonderful selection of some classic uh, uh, leading beers out of Belgium uh, the beer capital of the world uh, we'll come back and get the final rating on this one and uh, wrap it up here but uh, really had fun with this episode I hope y'all have been enjoying it up to this point Okay, so now it's time to go back through uh, this delicious selection of absolutely uh, world-class Belgian beers. Uh, Belgium is the beer capital of the world. It just is. Uh, I can't, honestly, I'm trying to think if I've ever actually had a beer out of Belgium that I said, meh, that's just okay, or gosh, no, nah, I, I dislike that. I don't think I have. And I've had several thousand different beers over the years, uh, but yeah, Belgium, they really, they really know the craft. Uh, they are serious brewers over there and they know what they're doing and they brew a quality, quality beer that is just uh, really fun to experience. Uh, this has been a really, really fun episode for me. Um, getting to try some new ones, uh, getting to revisit some I haven't had in a long time. So we're gonna go back through, give our final ratings. Uh, we started with the Chimay, the blue, uh, it's, it's commonly known as Chimay Blue, but it is the Chimay Grand Reserve. This is a Belgian dark strong ale, 9% ABV, classic big Belgian beer. Uh, this one, I'll just go quickly through the ratings so we can wrap this up. I know I tend to, I, I could just honestly go on endlessly talking about beer. I just absolutely love it, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, the aroma was an eight out of 10. Uh, the taste, nine out of 10, almost perfection. Body was a seven, still well above average, seven out of 10. 
Same for the mouthfeel, seven out of 10. Finish, I gave it a nine out of 10. Uh, hugely complex and just lingered for days. Uh, the head and the retention, almost perfection, nine out of 10 there. The appearance, this was textbook perfect, 10 out of 10. Uh, balance, eight out of 10. Uh, stupidly well-balanced beer. Uh, they feeling an intangible category. This is my subjective one. Um, I loved it. I gave it almost perfect, nine out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, again, nine out of 10. That brings this up to an 85 out of 100. Uh, very, very high score. This is well above average. This is in the realm of everybody that is interested in trying really exceptional beers or likes a particular style or want to just expand their horizons. This is one I'd recommend. I, it, you can't go wrong with Chimay. Um, one of the few Trappist uh, brewed by monks brewers in existence. Uh, this is one of them. They do a great job. Uh, number two, this is one of my absolute favorite beers in the world from the Hoiga Brewery Delirium Tremens. This is a Belgian strong ale. It is a golden strong ale, eight and a half percent. Uh, I honestly, I don't even know where to start with this. This is still in my top five favorite beers in the world. Uh, almost 20 years later, I still stand by it. This is one of the best beers in the world. I, I cannot say this enough. If you have never tried Delirium Tremens, the brewery is Hoiga, spelled H-U-Y-G-H-E, pronounced Hoiga. This beer is phenomenal. This is absolute world-class beer. It is worth the time. It is such an interesting beer uh, compared to almost any other beer I could name, just the way that it develops its flavor profile and this stupid long finish that just throws you at, what am I tasting? How is that beer? I don't, I don't even know, and I, I mean it when I say a cotton candy finish. It tastes like cotton candy sugars. I, I am not kidding. This beer is so good, it's ridiculous. Um, go through the ratings. Aroma, seven out of 10. Taste, nine out of 10. Body, nine out of 10. Mouthfeel, eight out of 10. Finish, 10 out of 10. It's perfection. Head and retention, nine out of 10. Appearance, 10 out of 10. Balance, 10 out of 10. Feeling an intangible category, my subjective, 10 out of 10. As an example of the style, 10 out of 10. This is a beer not to be missed. I cannot recommend it enough. I, I really cannot emphasize this enough. You have got to try Delirium Tremens if you've never had it. It's gonna blow your mind. Final score, 92 out of 100. Um, yeah, this, this is gonna be one of the top rated beers uh, probably for a very, very long time here. Moving on to St. Bernardus, uh, Prior 8. This is another one of the Trappist ales uh, brewed by monks at a monastery. Uh, this is a Belgian double Abbey Ale eight and a half percent. Um, another fantastic beer. Aroma, eight out of 10. Taste, eight out of 10. Body, nine out of 10. Just blew me away. Now feel eight out of 10. Really nice and viscous. Finish, eight out of 10. Super long. Head and retention, well above average, eight out of 10. The appearance, I called it perfect for the style for a Belgian double, uh, 10 out of 10. The balance, eight out of 10. And feeling intangible category, subjective, eight out of 10. And as an example of the style, eight out of 10. So that's a whole lot of eights, which means a really big score. Uh, this finished up at 83 out of 100. Again, just a fantastic beer. This is one I'm fairly certain I've never had. I've had several other beers from St. Bernardus and all of them are exceptional. I highly recommend this brewery. Finally, we finish off with the Von Steinberger, the Golden Drock. Uh, they have different versions of the Golden Drock. This is just the standard Golden Drock Ale, their classic version. This is a Belgian Dark Strong Ale, 10.5%, our highest ABV in the list today. Um, another just, all of these are just fantastic. Uh, we'll go through it. Aroma, 7 out of 10. This one wasn't as pronounced. It, it was kind of in the same realm of, of the Delirium Tremens. That's why they both got a 7 in this category. You could tell it was there, but... It didn't let you experience it until you really got it in your mouth. And, you know, I, I got to dock at points. That's just the way that it is. Um, the taste, 9 out of 10. Absolutely love this beer. Body was huge, 8 out of 10. Mouthfeel, just one point lower. Um, as I mentioned in, in, in the uh, tasting, 7 out of 10 there. Finish was fantastic, 8 out of 10. Hugely complex and lingers for days. Head and retention on this one I thought was perfect. And it's still sticking strong. I haven't uh, finished that one off, actually. It's sitting on the side waiting on me to finish recording my uh, scores. 10 out of 10 there. On um, the appearance, this was a lovely Belgian dark. 
Um, I gave it a nine out of 10, it was almost perfection. Balance eight out of 10. Feeling in the intangible a nine out of 10. As an example of the style, a nine out of 10. That wraps this one up to an 84. So uh, going uh, left to right, 85 for the Chimay Blue, 92 for the Hoyga Delirium Tremens, uh, 83 for the St. Bernardus Prior 8, and then finally an 84 for the Von Steinberger Golden Drock. All of these beers are world class. Um, I, I am a massive fan of Belgian beers. I have since the first time I ever had one, roughly two decades ago, and I still am to this day. I absolutely love Belgian beers. Um, they are all phenomenal. Highly recommend expanding your horizons. And uh, I really do appreciate you tuning in today as always. I hope that you learned something. I hope you at least found, uh, found it mildly entertaining. I know I entertain myself a lot, but I hope y'all find it enjoyable too. Um, again, we're not beer snobs here. We are connoisseurs. The world of craft beer is vast and it is, it is endless, the possibilities. There are so many thousands of brewers out there brewing phenomenal world-class beer that there's something out there for everybody. And we're just trying to give you some ideas of some of the ones that are a little easier to find, maybe some harder to find, but they're out there. It's absolutely worth it. We love beer. We hope you do too. As always, we thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe if you want to keep in the loop. We're dropping uh, multiple videos per week as we expand and grow our channel. I thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. Cheers.